Yeah. No, no, I also will feel for much more. Hello, everybody, and um, thank you for logging into this. This what I hope will be an exhilarating discussion. Um, before I embark on uh, introducing our panelists today, um, let me first uh, thank, along with Western Books, um, primarily Tata Steel Kolkata Literary Meet and its uh, director, Malavika Banerjee, for organizing um, this presentation, this discussion today. Um, we are in Kolkata. My name is Chandrasekhar Mukherjee. I'm a doctor and uh, a passionate fan. I'm passionate about art. And I'm also a very dear friend of one of our participants today, Ina Puri, along with um, the third person who uh, we wish to talk about and we will be talking about today, um, your Mr. Nimai Ghosh, who unfortunately is no longer with us. Um, let me start first by introducing our panelists. Parish Maiti is one of India's foremost contemporary artists. His art has been exhibited across continents in prominent galleries and art fairs. No wonder then that he has been felicitated by various national and international institutions. Maiti was awarded the Pad Padma Shri by the government of India in 2014 for his contribution to the arts. Several books have been published on Ma Maiti's work including The World on a Canvas, A Visual Voyage, and An Enchanting Journey, Porish Maiti's Kerala. And also the book we are discussing today, Porish Maiti, A Portrait of the Artist in the World, which traces Nimai Ghosh's journey with Maiti over three decades. The second illustrious person we have on our panel is Ina Puri, Ina is a writer, biographer, art curator, and collector. She is the author of several books, including In Black and White, which is a biography of Manjit Bawa, Faces of Indian Art, which is a landmark publication depicting the work of 52 Indian artists, and Journey with a Hundred Strings, a book on the music and life of Pandit Shiv Kumar Sharma. She has produced Meeting Manjit, a film on Baba, a friend and collaborator, which won the National Award. Her latest book is Raghurai's Kolkata. Ina's three decade long engagement with the arts embraces everything from tribal art and folk theater to contemporary performing arts, visual art, and literature. The third person we must talk about today is um, the great Nimai Ghosh. Nimai Ghosh is best known as the photobiographer of Shukdi Ray. All of you know that. During his long association with Ray between 1967 and 1992, he photographed every aspect of the maestro at work as well as stills of his films. He also extensively photographed Bengali theater for four decades from the 1960s onwards. His work includes extensive images of Indian art in the volume Faces of Indian Art and the volume we are discussing today and of tribal and rural lives in Kutch, Bastar, the Bonda Hills, Arunachal Pradesh. Nimaida was awarded the Padma Shri in 2010 and served as a jury member in the National Film Awards Committee. There are numerous publications which focus on and include his work, and I won't mention any of them specifically today. Uh, but he is not here with us. Um, he left us a very short while ago after a long and illustrious career uh, in which he has given us so much joy. So let me move on now um, to asking for some images. You know, the book we're discussing, which is part of our discussion today, we'll be talking about the work of uh, Torishmaiti, the work of Inapuri, as well as Nimai Ghosh. 
and um, the book in, in in consideration which refers to to all three of these individuals is portrait of the artist in the world for a study and so i'm just going to ask for some images here they are coming up to be shown from the book so you get a feel of what the book contains so this is one of uh, Parish Babu's what we just saw was one of his great watercolors. Um, some very illustrative of the, of, of the quality of the watercolor work that he does. This is a photograph by Nimai Babu of uh, Parish in Shantiniketan. Note the backdrop, the use of light. Um, here, Parish Babu is sitting and enjoying and trying to look right back. What are you having, Parish Babu? Is it a cup of tea? Huh? In a tea and tea and puri, luchi and luchi. It, 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 where is this? Babu Ghat. Uh, so this is in Babu Ghat. Hmm. That was in my Kutu favorite Ghat. destination. So we get the, the whole humdrum activity of a tea stall. Um, this is Parish uh, in full form during a bowl performance with the ekta, <laughs> with the ekta. Um, and again, and this is um, a really dramatic photograph in Shantini, in Shantini Kutunai. That's right. These are images from, from Kerala, of, yes. of the performing arts, um, Kathakali dancers. Next slide, please. And the same in the black and white format. A sketch. A sketch. Here we have uh, many of our today's protagonists. You can see uh, Porish painting. He is completely focused on, on what he's doing. He's got, um, this is, I think, in, in Magmela, you know, you were saying? Right. Um, in in Shantini Gadon. And you can see Ina sitting there at the back of the left hand corner. Next to her is Joyce Berman, Porish Babu's wife. And a whole heap of people who've come around um, to, to witness what is happening, something which happens very often with, with Porish Mike. And then again, one of his um, great watercolors. Um, what time of the day are you depicting in this? Early this morning. Uh, Early it's a mist in Shimla. Yes. The toy train is just reaching the Summer Hill station. Beautiful, and you get that sense of of the dawn with that, and we will talk more about it. So, without any further ado, um, I'm going to proceed with the discussion, and we'll start with a very simple question first. Um, Ina and Parish, uh, I would like to ask, start with asking you both about the making of this book. Ina, can you first uh, tell us something about that? Well, uh, what had actually happened was that we were working on Faces of Indian Art. Uh, from the year 1998, and this involved Nimai Gold shooting uh, the, the studio spaces of 52 artists across the country. He even traveled to Corbio to shoot Raza. All of this was happening. It was our plan that there will be a second book because this book was more about the senior artists. The second book never happened, even though he had planned it all out. But Porish Maiti sought Nimaikos out and proposed that why don't we do this book in any case? Why don't we document my journey as a painter? You travel, we'll travel together. And I have to explain this to you and to, uh, to the viewers that Nimaida might have been much older than Porish Maiti, but the two of them had struck a very deep friendship. And not only that, they shared many sensibilities and they came from the same uh, same state, same... We stay. Same state. Same state. Same state. Same state. Same state. You know how we are. We love our travel and all of that. So Porish and Nimaida became the closest of buddies. And Nimaida immediately agreed and he said, hey, I'm right at Project Accord. We were doing several other things. Nimaida Porish, of course, had his many exhibitions and everything else. I was working on other projects. 
but this was what we came back to you know shekhar over the last 10 years you know we would have this uh this to return to and eight kaligat road became the center of this adda porish jokhon ni kolkata jeto he would go and see me my dad's house every time i was there i would go see me my dad and we would talk about this book so if you ask me how the documentation happened it was i think impressions and recollections and memories i never sat down and made notes mm. but yes i have seen porish maithi from very early times from the early 90s in fact the first time i saw him in an exhibition was in gallery 88 sanjana kapoor was in calcutta and the two of us mm. had gone to gallery 88 and there was a very young porish maithi's work so porish ke ek dik theke ami onek bochhor pore ami still here and uh, so nimai gosh and that how this book happened and continued to happen we didn't want it to end you know we just wanted to spend our time talking about things talking about experiences memories and gradually day by day this this book built up it well apart from being the heaviest book that i have ever lifted it has <laughs> one other, it has one other unique uh, uh, element about it which is that there are these two masters who are traveling together yes and the majority of the photographs in the book are about them traveling in the world which is where in the world comes in the artists in the world traveling in the world it is not um, it, you know there, there are so many different locations there are not stills in the studio and that really uh, stands out so you know what is tell us something about how a renowned photographer and a famous artist travel together how you reacted to new places and how you collaborated in the making of the book mane ki bhabe eta apnader ei dujoner shohajogiter ki bhabe holo uh i knew about nimai the very well from his photograph he knew of me then one very day i bought one of his photograph from one of his exhibition and i was you know very instinctively uh could you know associate with him and he said uh, you know you travel so many places i asked him where have you traveled he said you know i travel just mostly in bengal maybe once or twice out i said don't worry we'll go many places the places we have visited it was not the first time for me it was probably 20 times but for him it was all first time he said i have never been to himachal i have never you know been to ajanta ilora i have never been to london venice i said don't worry 1993 i have in travel first time to venice i will take you don't worry you won't believe that last 20 years we were as inadi said that uh, we had a lot of age difference but we both of us were just like a child we were playing unknowingly he was playing with his own medium black and white film canon nikon and i was playing with my color line forms on paper and canvas sketchbook and what is unique like early morning is my habit i would go for a walk even in you know strong winter maybe sit down in a tea stall and he would carry an unknowingly i don't know from where he would you know click maybe you know the street dogs are there i am reading a newspaper in you know near kopai so all these things not only that i am at war but he captured me my every moment and not only whole of bengal orissa my native place tamlu and then um ajanta ilora varanasi rajasthan kerala many times himachal is unbelievable london and venice so a journey and creating this bridge got extended extended and extended it was endless yes, yes. and one very day you know he said you know i have done probably more than 5000 photographs with you um and i have seen your earlier books what you have done and they looks very grand why don't you do a book 
with all these photographs and I know it will be the best book in my life. I said, Nimaida, is it done? What is your wish? I will try to fulfill with God's grace. So as Hinadi said about 10 years back, we started imagining and conceptualizing this book. And slowly, slowly, you know, scanning, all this is happening. It took a long time. Uh, and every day, every moment, he, whenever we, you know, met or we were talking, Kaveh asked me, when it is coming? Have you designed? So quietly we were, you know, taking it time. And also we were looking for an, an international people to publish this book. Yes. And God, you know, God's grace, we got Western Amazon. So they were graciously, you know, they said, first we want to see the photograph. And when they saw the photograph, they said, what is amazing, that every photograph, by, by then we have 90%, 95% compiled the book. They said every page is unique. And there is a mystery. Is right. is mystery. After, you know, one page to next page. So you cannot even think that what is there in next page, what photograph can be there. Yeah. And then I said, no, the book has to be this big. As you said, it's quietly the heaviest, but <laughs> Nimaida was quite a heavy man with his stretcher structure and with his career and with his illustrious life. So I said, I, wanted to come on to that. You know, I really wanted to come on to that. And I, uh, you know, we were talking earlier about him and you mentioned that he was childlike. But Nimai Ghosh was most famous for the work that he did with, with, with Ray. Um, and most people know him from that. But both of you have seen his work in so many other settings. Uh, you know, tell us something about the making of Faces of Indian Art, which uh, Nimai Ghosh was the, uh, the, the the key photographer. And tell me also, uh, tell everyone also, why is his work so important? Well, you know, we, when we were growing up in Calcutta, Nimai Ghosh was the one person, one photographer we all knew about. Like Porish said, Porish said a little while ago, and Shruttujit Rai, this was Shruttujit Rai's boss well. So obviously he had to have something which was unique and, and, and quite brilliant about his work. Because Shruttujit Rai included him in his sets and he became Shruttujit Rai's still photographer. Personally speaking, I think, you know, with art, it's something that is completely from the heart. You have to just look at work and either respond or not. When I saw Nimai Kush's work for the first time, I went to his studio. Initially, there were TPs, and that's the way you know one worked. But he graduated from there to the computer. He was very eager to keep up with the times. And in the span of our meetings, I realized that this man has collected an archive that is invaluable. It was brilliant. Not only Shotujit Rai, Jarkats Tuni, Oshadharan Bhabe document Kuritin. Not only his films, Gupi Gain, Barhaba, and uh, you know, films from Gupi Gain, but also his documentary films, Bala, Sikkim, Shankatik, the, uh, the Blind Painter, uh, My Inner Eye, Shamonde, Jata, uh, Jata, Kaj, Pinot Bihari Mukhaji, Rokore, Jata, Kaj, The Inner Eye, Oshadharun Kaj. Interestingly, when Porish, when he was shooting Porish, there was this one time that, that there was this little overlap that happened. We were also shooting in Shantiniketan. And Nimalda took us around and showed us where he had shot Ray shoot, you know, where, where he watched Ray shoot uh, Binod Bihari Mukherjee. And, and, it was, and it was wonderful. So it was also for us a learning process for, for Porish, for me certainly. When Nimai Dash spoke about his, his work, spoke about his career, it was fascinating. He began as a stage actor. Uni theatre obinoy kurtin. Ebum tapore japon uni theatre chobitola shurukore, she tenth row theke, uni chobita tulten. And that scene was the tenth row. From the tenth row, it was fixed. With Nimai Dash, everything had to be just fixed. He never took chances, right? Like Shamunde, he learned from. Uh, he says that hey, Tapush Babu Amar Guru. So, you know, uh, this was his life. Uni, every day he, he learned something and he created 
created the most fabulous work. That is Nimai Ghosh. And I'm tell, so honored tell that us, he uh, Tell us something project. about his work with Antonioni. Well, uh, as, as you know, because uh, you and I were planning to document his life, which sadly never happened, uh, he was also very keen that we make that documentary on him. Uh, he spoke to us. You remember the times he showed us uh, his his the photographs that taken of Antonioni, uh, and it was his last birthday. The, the the paintings that he was then making, photographs, very intimate photographs with his wife. That and body of work. Actually, he told him to, 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 to do that uh, shoot. But you know what? I feel that Corona Corona Din Sawan is going to make a book. Nimaida Thakbin na, but Nimaida Akono Archive Ato Chobi Ache. I'm sure his family, family members will take it forward. We, we will come back to Nimai Ghosh, but uh, I just wanted to focus on uh, the man of the moment. Uh, Porish, I found one of your statements about your work very interesting. You have said, that your watercolors are watercolor gulo alo theke ondhokare jay ar apnar oil painting gulo utto they move from dark to light ondhokar theke alo um ektu e bapare amader bujhe bolben so this is a technical thing uh you can say method methods generally uh when you do watercolor uh, you start with the light and in watercolor the source of light is the paper okay. paper is because you cannot use the white pigment but in oil you cannot do light first because on light you cannot apply the dark color it will definitely crack after some time and the color might you know uh, discolor so that's why it is a two different like a north pole and south pole is very important that you follow this basic uh, you know grammar so this is very important because art of course that it comes from your heart but it has also a science chemistry mm. that but see art is not that how you do basically what you do mm. but it is Best to follow that fundamental, you know, theory to do like that. Otherwise, that in future the, your painting might have problem. Uh, Crack will come. Um, it will peel off. It will, you know. It will need restoration it. if it's not done technically right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Right. So yeah. that's why that fundamental that law in art, watercolor and oil, one should follow that. That is really interesting and I'm sure the members of our audience who are artists themselves or who are interested in art will, will, will be illuminated by your answer. Thank you for that. Um, you know, I've always found a mystical quality in all your watercolors. You've painted Summer Hill in the morning and you've talked about the deep indigo colors just before the dawn, changing at dawn, almost in spiritual terms. You have described the works of other artists like Turner as mystical. Um, do you believe that great art and the way great artists see some of their subjects, their themes, that it contains a touch of the divine, of the spiritual, the way they it see it? To be there. It has to be there because art really is kind of a meditation and it's very divine. It comes from your you know, deepest core from the heart. So it is very important. It has to be meditative. It has to be emotional. And it it has to have some mystic quality where people will go round and round. They will be, it's kind of, they'll be buying from that art. They will not be able to move from that art. And they will always in search. And they will searching, you know, oh, this is that. I never thought of it. So that quality has to be there. And it comes spontaneously, Dr. Mukherjee. Like when you practice, you know, slowly, slowly in music or in any form of art, that meditative moment has to come. Then it becomes, you know, a great art, masterpiece. 
otherwise it will be really you know on surface that is very interesting ina would you like to comment on this yes i was just going to say that you know when it came to shotujit rai's films and he was on the set shooting it is said that nimaiko couldn't stop shooting when he was when he was taking photographs even after the final cut had been called he would continue to shoot and and create magic with the other compositions that followed so there also i find the similar thing happening when he was shooting with porish it's it's of course porish painting it's the colors it's the composition he's almost hunched over porish when porish is painting in some of the shots but otherwise you know there is a sense of the space behind him he was very fond of theater and he was very fond of performance performances so when porish for instance was in rajasthan and they were looking at you know the the the, the puppet theater and all of that happening around them nimaida was was fascinated and that also became a part of of his composition i find that very interesting that you know what he would begin shooting ultimately would end up you know in a way that was that was far beyond because onek kichu tar modhe chole ashto uni shei ekta tableau create korten jeta shudhu jeta subject shei subject ke niye amar kaj korte hobe it wasn't like that you know he would be constantly thinking he would be constantly creating in his mind he would be shifting his positions for and remember one thing when they started work nimaida wasn't a young guy he was already in his early 70s jothoshto boyosh hoychilo uno assistant chilo no uni akla kaj kor ebong you know crouching over bending over it you know it, that's the way he worked and uh, that how he was able to get these images and that's all there in the book and also the way for it works but talking Chokal just ready korte periye jeten venice ora gache sokal bela porish is getting ready porish of course whenever he travels wherever this i can vouch for because we've traveled together in several places his you know puro material puro studio shonge jay so porish by the time he sets out it would be say 9:30 9 o'clock but bhor bala nimaida kintu chole gechen he has gone to uh, you know jekhane porish kaj korbe decide koreche shekhane giye light thik ache kina kothay porish bosbe he has done a quick recce and come back and i think in his head he's already planned thik ache ajke erokom bhabe jinish ta ke ami dorbo that was you have, traveled, you have traveled extensively with porish in so many places um along the silk route in china in czechoslovakia in shantiniketan uh, and other places yeah there's something quite unique about the way porish reacts to his his immediate environment tell us something about it. porish uh, suppose uh, you know you're in the middle of a uh, of of a market square and this is i'm talking about uh, uh silk route you know we were in ulunchi and uh, fascinating mosques and uh, you know people around selling their wares keu boshe musicians ra bajacche bishon ekta interesting ekta environment tar moddhe hota porish paiti kothao nei 27 28 jon artist senior artist ra sob golpo korche keu boshe coffee khacche someone having a glass of wine all of this happening then you look around and you find somewhere in the corner porish is sitting and making sketches he's got his sketchbook out and fluently and fluidly these lines are happening in front of him totally absorbed amra hashchi golf korchi ghurchi china te arekta kotha amar khub mojar mone pore amra we had traveled from beijing to shanghai and it was a three week tour and ekta jaygay amra we were crossing i think we were passing the yellow river and porish's excitement then was something that i'll never forget because the others saw the yellow river as as a beautiful body of water but porish saw the yellow river as the yellow river and when he came back he made this stunning painting of a uh, of 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 a yellow river a river that was yellow so i think he described it as chromium yellow ha tar pore amra jokhon gechi krumlo te shekhane chap buildings kulo na they were all very beautifully the, the 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 architecture was very interesting they were kind of leaning on each other almost drunkenly and uh, porish some of it 
he didn't take photographs and, and he, that was not the way he documented. Either he would take uh, notes in his mind or else he would, he would just sketch. And fascinating. I mean, process of the process, I, I found it very interesting. Parish will tell you more. So this Chesky Kung Lob, when I went, it is a place uh, in Czech Republic, just border of Austria, from where Egon Schiele's mother, the world famous Egon Schiele from Aust Austria, his mother came from the, that place. When we went to that place, it reminded me of Shimla, beautiful version of Shimla. I said, my goodness, I have started painting Shimla 1996. And this was, you know, uh, 2009 or 10. I said, this is much cleaner version. The blues are blue, not faded. Yellow is yellow. But the language is very similar. So I then came back and started a series. And there was a small, you know, uh, city hall, municipal hall converted into Egon Silas Museum. Yes. And when we went to that small museum, we, I, we, I saw the sketches and the paintings. I said, my goodness, it's very similar, you know, what I used to, you know, draw. I started this kind of houses and one top of each other, like one is leaning on another one, colorful, you know, slanting roof and the trees. I started doing those much more, you know, deeper understanding because I started that much earlier. I used to live uh, summertime, four months, three months in, in Himalayas. So I started those. But I must uh, tell you one very interesting thing of uh, Nimaida. He never said no to anything. Uh -huh. He never said no. He was such a positive man. Like one day, we, we, I said, I'll take you to Gajini. He said, I've never heard the name. I said, it's beyond you know, um, Bikhanir, about 30 kilometers on the out of Bikhanir, in the desert, the Maharaja Bikhanir created the, you know, farmhouse, like a 6,000, I think, acres of land, artificial lake, and beautiful palace on water. We were there with another photographer friend from New York. It was two degree. It was winter in January. We were shooting and it was like hot kapche. It was shivering. So one morning we got up and I said, Nimaida, how long have you been to Agra Taj Mahal? How, how did you see Taj Mahal? He said, I have seen you know, Taj Mahal from front. It looks very flat. I said, actually, to see the Taj Mahal, you have to go you know, other side, the back and on the reflection of Jamuna. Yamuna and you see. He said, let's go. I said, Nimaita is 800 kilometers. He said, yes, we we'll go. We traveled that morning. We reached around 11 p.m. He was quite old, as Inad said. And he was, he said, I said, Nimaita, are you all right? I am fine, Paris. I want to work. I want to work. I want to work and work. And then I hired that there is a boat, took a special permission, went to Yamuna. And we, I was painting. I knew people that I've been many times. I had been. So we were sitting at the boat, the reflection. I said, you see, the reflection, how it looks during sunset and early morning. And he said, that's the light to capture for us. That creates a long shadow. The light never creates a long shadow, you know, and it makes things very flat. He never uses, he never uses flat. That's very interesting. Even those, the Shantinikatan Baul you saw, you know, it was 3200 ISO film, which captured the Olympic Games. He said, for us, I said, Nimaita, don't worry, I will bring 3200 IOS. I said, I've never heard this. I said, it will capture the movement, you know, without checking at night. We can capture the, you know, musician, folk musician in, like, bowel musician in 
Shanti Niketan and folk musician in Rajasthan. So he was, you know, always he was he was asking me for his what speed. I said 400, 800 speed. So you know, very interesting. He will never say no to anything. Ajanta, as you know, that, uh, Nimaida's photography as spontaneous and fluid. You know, I remember you mentioning that you felt that he was an instinctive photographer. Um, can you tell us a little more about, about, about his methodology of taking photographs? With him? Was he instinctive? Did he know this moment was what he wanted to capture? And he was not somebody who dressed up the stage too much for his photographs? Yeah, well, when he was shooting sets, and apart from Shotojit Rai, he also worked on the sets of uh, Roland uh, Joffe and of uh, several other filmmakers, Gautam Ghosh. But sets were kind of, you know, it was pre planned. But with Nimainda, even where, it, where a set was concerned, he would, like I said, that he would shoot even otherwise. Set it, or just a scene that shesh hoye jabar pore ho ni, kintu kaj kore jeten. Aro chobi hoye to material ni dekte peten that that he wanted to document, that he wanted to shoot. And when it came to this particular project, this work with Porish, it was all unrehearsed. It was all sheer instinct because Porish. Porish ke kichu to bola jaye na. Porish aaj ke ei second day kine boshi chobi aate. Porish second day. Bhagavan Jane could have Bushyatsi. At a shimla at the station, eh? At the Hanoi Gurney Thor and Jimmy, she can have shop luggage luggage. Shop luggage rather than a check into Shamne to be for a Kabushyatsi porridge. It is an outstanding photograph which speaks of the way this man is and the way he works, but also of how Nimai Ghosh is constantly at the pop side to put a Kirokom at an interesting shot part of it, which is why each page in this book is so different. Each mood is so so diverse and so different. Because it wasn't rehearsed, it wasn't pre-planned. It was something that he did on the spot, unrehearsed, impromptu. Completely. He was very spontaneous. He was very he was spontaneous. Totally spontaneous. Very spontaneous. And let me assure the audience that the book is strewn with such wonderful spontaneous photographs. Um, Porish Babu, you mentioned just now sitting on a boat in the Jomuna. Um, I want to talk a little about the different themes which pervade your, you know, your, your work. And one of them is boats and the river, whether we are talking about um, the, the rivers Ganga and Modi, whether we are talking about Kashi Ganga, whether we are talking about the Rupnaran or, or the canals of Venice. Um, tell us a little about why this theme is so important. See, I grew up uh, in Tamluk, surrounded by, you know, river, pond, canal, water bodies, monsoon, non-stop monsoon, rain, varsha hutche. So my life is surrounded by water. Later on, uh, I have realized that water makes people soft. It makes you soft and with the water, you can see multi-dimension. Like suppose you are walking on the street. Suddenly, if it is raining, the person is with umbrella and the road is wet. You see the reflection of that person and the umbrella and maybe reflection of the landscape you can see on the. So it creates multi-dimension. And that's why it, as you know, that art is always socioeconomic. You know, environment, what you see, what you grow, what you smell, then you are part of that. I cannot think what is happening in moon because I am with the water all the time and I love water. I probably thought that, you know, I want to be a sailor. Mm -hmm. Then when I started drawing first the boats, Rupnaran River next to, you know, Kamluk is surrounded by this river, you know, fascinating river. So I used to sit on the boat. At the age of four or five years, I was never scared of water. We were in born swimmer. We used to climb up of the, you know, coconut tree, Narkel Gacha Ropot, we used to ride. So it was very spontaneous. 
So water like flows within me very spontaneously. So that's why you will see a lot of my paintings, like as you have mentioned the Varanasi, there is the water. Then you see China many places, rivers are there, Venice river is there, Orissa the coast is there. And when you go next to the water, let's say suddenly you feel very cool. Your brain feels very cool. When you go to the water, when you swim, your body, your mind, everything feels cool. And of course, I picked up watercolor because I had no option. That was the cheapest medium. Uh, just a paper and just a little bit tube color or a cake color in the beginning. I used to use and to create a painting. And later on, I've understood that this uh, Watercolor is the most difficult medium because there you cannot rectify, you cannot change. So you have to be 100% correct. So first of all, it is water, the medium, and then paint the water. So it really combined and created the bridge in my lot of my thousands of my painting. And so both, even sometimes when I was in Calcutta, or my native place, they used to call me boat, boat artist. <laughs> boat artist. And one of my very closest friends said, you know, even if he close his eyes now, he knows which way to paint boat. So boat is like integral part in my blood, in me, with my every sense. So boat comes again and again suddenly of course i went to varanasi 1984 then again revisited again revisited i thought same like venice oh this is enough enough is enough i will not go to this place again but again i go i don't know and every time i go i find something very deeper than that new and i sometimes i feel that probably whole life i can you know paint here even in babu Ghat, like when I go to my native place, Kamloop, I'm like a child from the window of the car. I look at the bridge and the water. How does it look in monsoon or you know during sunset or early morning? So water creates a sensation to me. And I love rain. I love to walk in the rain. You know, sometimes my wife say, Are, you know, what are you doing? Jor asbe. I said, if you don't, you know, walk in the rain, how will you understand the water? So, yes, I mean, uh, some of the most magnificent watercolors I have ever seen. So beautiful, the magnetic pull of the river and what it contains. Uh, marvelous, marvelously depicted in this book and throughout your work. Um, and let me just say that even Boris though Boris is saying that he started with watercolors, he paints in every every possible medium, um, not just watercolors. Um, I also wanted to ask you about another theme which, which is there in your work, which is to do with performing artists of a great variety. You know, we are talking about Kathakali, Thayam, the Manganiriyas, the, the Bau singers, the Sufi singers. I mean, is this something that you are trying to, is this a part of our heritage which is fast disappearing, which you're recording, or is this something more? Is the reason why you, you want to paint so many different varieties of performing artists? Anyway, from child now, I, I, I love music. I used to listen to radio. Even today, sometimes I listen to radio. When I'm painting in the studio, radio is going on. I don't know what is going on. I know some sound is coming. And it is taking me to a meditative, you know, area. I don't know. I get lost with the music. And I love the folk music because they are very pure. And it's very meditative. There is no, you know, like, Whatever they have, sometimes, you know, some, some musician, they create the sound from, you know, the Martin Kulsi Deke Awaj Beroch. So, and those sounds are very pure. I always feel 
like this baul singer as you know the baul si singing is is very meditative and it mm -hmm. takes into a different meaning it not that what they are singing it has a deeper understanding and meaning of those words and those songs it takes you to a different level and it blends in my painting and you must have seen that many many of my paintings dominantly are musician and their surroundings their life their attire their color everything i have painted god knows hundreds of baul singer hundreds kathakali, of baul singer. kathakali dancers the kathakali mask because the i believe the kathakali the expression the that face is the most exaggeration of the human form and the dance and mm -hmm. it takes sometimes a day to create that you know uh, the face what is very very important and as you know that when you see that that it quietly hypnotize you that face when i went to kerala 1986 first after that i we have been many times during when you know the kerala tourism and incredible india commission me to do a series and create a book enchanting journey we travel to cap to kerala to capture the monsoon seven days the rain is happening we are shooting in thickly in forest you know god knows this um um backwaters we lived in backwaters it was so meditative at night the sound of you know little little those insect and just maybe some bird and some fish just little drops of water created the sound kind of sensation to pick up my brush and paper to create watercolor not that as inadi said that i was always doing sketches i did thousand thousands of paintings on the spot i started and finished thousands of painting now uh, i don't sh suddenly show mostly i have done painting on the spot which is bigger one maybe not possible like i do sometimes 8 feet watercolor or 10 feet you know oil acrylic i do you know from the in the studio not from the sketch is from my head and heart not from i never i cannot see a photograph and paint or i cannot see a sketch and paint because i i do very very instinctively straight with the color line and forms not even a drawing i create so you are an instinctive painter also and i have like, I, i yes and i was an instinctive photographer <laughs> that's right that's why the bridge you know that bridge created very beautifully as inadi in the beginning said that our likings were very same also both of us are torian he was also torian that's very funny yes ah uh, so Similar our likings were so many similarities so they could very uh, we had almost everything similar and he won't believe many times he used to tell me you know why i mm, did i should have known you you know 20 years more mane aro kom boys theke and i today feel very sad that why you know he did not leave much more to create the more extension of our bridge i feel really very very sad and i said let me dedicate this book to him you know tell us something about uh, i mean nimai ghosh's one of his great talents was the use of light in his work um i remember sitting with him and seeing a photograph of an artist um for your book and the light the entire photograph is expressed through a ray of light which is falling on the hands of this very senior artist um everything else is in shadow Tell us something about his use of light, and I know that light is also very important in Polish's work. But, but, yes. But well, where where Nimai is concerned, I think light plays a very important role. Remember one thing that when he was working, Tokun kitu technologically atulo advantages chilo na achkal jero kumatse. So it had to be sometimes a very gritty 
ব্ল্যাক এন্ড হোয়াইট ইমেজ যেটা নিয়ে উনি কাজ করেছেন এবং বিভিন্ন রকম স্টেজ দুনে গেছেন বিভিন্ন রকমের এক্সপেরিমেন্টেশন করেছেন not that it worked every time but he never gave up and what he told us again and again you you'll read in the interview amra onek kotha bolechi ebong i have recorded all these interviews it's there in the book is that that he wouldn't ever give up he wouldn't stop uni jemon chobi tulchen shei 36 shots uni kintu tulei jachen hoyto maybe prothom dike ekta or moner moton shot actually hoye gechilo but he continues to work continues to experiment and 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 that is his that is what makes his work so unique in the book faces of indian art we are talking about 52 different artists and each artist is so different we are talking about shobnath kaur shobnath kaur er kaj ta the whole photograph is just focused on his on his hands shudhu shei alo ta hater upore porche shei ta where manjit is concerned manjit er uh, pechon theke and mind you he is not he doesn't use flash manjit er profile shekhane or dadi ta flow korche kothao jano ekta adbhut ekta mysticism eshe geche shekhane raza shonge ekta onno mood but it's all light related it's all you know it's it's a, it's the way he uses light and each time this is unique and different and seta hoyto because প্রত্যেক জায়গায় এক একটা জায়গায় অন্য রকমের লাইট এক এক রকমের স্টুডিও বাট উনি সেটাকে খুঁজে বার করতেন উনি সেটাকে সামহাউ হি উড ইটস লাইক দ্য ওয়াটার ডিভাইনার ইউ নো ইট ইস হি উড নো দ্য এক্স্যাক্ট স্পট হি উড নো ওয়ে টু ফোকাস এন্ড কাম আপ উইথ দ্য মোস্ট এক্সট্রাঅর্ডিনারি রেজাল্টস কিন্তু টেকনোলজিক্যালি তুমি যদি ভাবো এখন কত রকমের ইউ নো ইউ ক্যান মনিটর ইউ ক্যান ইউ ক্যান ইউ নো ফটোশপ ইউ ক্যান ডু সো মেনি डिफरेंट থিংস উইথ দ্য ফটোগ্রাফ everyone is turned into a photographer with the joy of black and white the joy of the black and white analog photographs still remains uh, exactly what is you tell us something about this use of light because it's very very important to you as well you know from the beginning of my uh, career like i started doing art in, at the age of 7 i have realized the light is most important part for any visual art if it is flat one has to create the multi dimension on a plane surface and then light plays important role that how the artist can create a multi dimension on a flat surface even when i do sculpture i am very careful about the light any anyway, i paint during the day to see the and capture the natural light i get up early morning to watch the sunlight how the sun is coming up how light is changing how color is changing even same same way especially the falling light when the sun is setting i i see the is that the same color when sun was rising and same light no it's not same it has some difference one has to realize that so light plays a very vital important role for any visual you know image as inadi said the minimize the photograph we were very much i am very much concerned about the light even when i paint maybe let's say i am in my studio i paint very close to the window and i see the when light is creating very unique you know and pure color like in the light like red looks red but in artificial light it might be changing with the halogen or with the you know yellowish light so light is very very important not only while i'm doing or creating a piece of art also when you are exhibiting in the gallery or even a museum yeah. as you know they are very much concerned about how to you know create the light when you go to louvre or moma or any museum so light plays the most vital role for any visual art i am very very concerned and when you, whenever even if you come to my studio you will see full of light light and is light like only paint in the day and light is life without light no life when you see a gloomy day you feel very sad 
when you see a striking you know sunny day you feel with joy and happiness so light is life light is life so now i'm going to proceed to my last question before we um, allow some questions from the audience and there have been a few um, i would just like to ask both of you you ina first why is it important why is public art important why is it important that we have more museums galleries places that we can exhibit uh, more artists um, why is public art important well personally i just feel that where india is concerned for instance look at ajanta elora we have actually had public art forever kintu uh, in, cave in, cave in cave paintings bim betka oshadharon kaaj তাছাড়া মডার্নিস্ট যদি ধরি আমরা স্কালপচার ওয়ান অফ দ্য আর্লিয়েস্ট ওয়ার্কস কিন্তু শান্তিনিকেতনে ইটস এ সাঁওতাল ফ্যামিলি বাই রাম কিঙ্কর বেজ হোয়াট মেক্স ইট সো ইম্পর্টেন্ট মি ফ্যাক্ট দ্যাট ওয়েন ইউ গো ইভেন ইভেন এন অর্ডিনারি রিক্সাওয়ালা যে তার পাশ থেকে যাচ্ছে পয়েন্ট করে বলবে জানেন তো এটা কিন্তু রাম কিঙ্কর বেজের কাজ ইউ নো দ্য ফ্যাক্ট দ্যাট ইট বিলংস টু দ্য এন্টায়ার কমিউনিটি the fact that it is that it 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 belongs everyone can claim and say that it is our that is very important you know the the beautiful murals of vinod bihari mukherjee of k j subramanian ogulo jone kono ticket lage na okhane sadharon lokher giye daniye dekhte pare bhalo lage bhalo na lage that is entirely a personal opinion but it is there for everyone to enjoy and see and i think it is very important among the government kotha to monei hoye je the culture department theke etar somondhe ektu bhabna chinta kora dorkar we do have wonderful museums coming up there is map in bangalore now there is knma bhalo kaj nischoy hocche kintu aro onek kichu kora baki ache bihar e there is a new museum that's come up but we have so many young artists and we have a lot of children the generation afterwards they need to know a lot more about art and artists and the process so shita jonno amar personally mone hoy that khub dorkar khub khub dorkar porish you know artists have a different way of seeing the world and do you think that public art spaces allow other human beings to to witness this view that this different way of seeing the world is different perspectives and do you think that lifts human consciousness in some way see art it is actually not for you know special drawing rooms or bedrooms art has to be public from the beginning of civilization art was public as inadi has mentioned already ajanta elora from primitive art they were all expressed outside it has to be part of our everybody not for some exclusive people because art takes everybody to a different level it enlightens your body mind and soul yeah. if you see you know in spain or in france or many places in the world you will see suddenly a big building and outside there is a mural maybe a car coming it will create some they create those murals diwara vera in you know uh, in Next mexico you see the murals they are everywhere in market place railway station outside even i have seen in mexico city there is an avenue and it has hundreds of benches they have asked different artists to design each bench you will surprise to see or oh, each and every bench looks a piece of art so you cannot differentiate art from the life so it is very important that art has to be public it was public 5000 years back you see in egyptian civilization greek civilization indus valley civilization harappa mohenjodaro everywhere art was always public you see the konarok temple you see the ajay khajuraho they were all public now fortunately some years back in india the public art became quite big it is happening big way and uh, many you know places art is happening and i'm sure you have seen airports many places 
that each and every body can be part of the art art you cannot differentiate from yeah. just a people or anybody it it cannot be exclusive for a drawing group Thank we you. need make museums of course it will come up it yeah, is yeah but there is a problem i think i agree with porish because shikhar if you look at savai uh, gandharva the uh, savai uh, madhopur uh, railway station uh, shikhar nikin to the station has these beautiful bold images of the tiger because ranthambore is uh, is is next door she can a puro station e ora shei bagher chobi eke rekheche so i think yeah i think we are making a, a, a in patna a uh, outside patna there is a full railway station uh, painted with the mural they ask lot of young artist even in delhi you see lot of this you know kura kura dan outside is painting it creates there are many places even outside the school boundary wall is painted beautiful murals it depicts oh, our there life is, there is a beauty yeah yeah it it is there so on that pluralistic and high note i should move on to some questions from um people who have tuned in and logged in to listen to this presentation um the first one i should take is from uh, rajeshri guho she asks you porish sir you love working with the brightest of colors Do you not feel unhappy and inappropriate when you use grey, peppery, or black? My black is not a black because black is black is also transparent. When suddenly in the room the you know light goes, it is dark black, but you can go through. So my black is the combination of many colors. So I am never even you know scared. of using any striking bright color or black color or white color i play with the color and like a child and i create whatever i have to create or spontaneously what i have to create so i am never fear of any color and the color came my first travel on my rajasthan tour 1990 So we have a question from uh, Julie Mehta, and this is for you, Ina. What were the toughest challenges through the years that it took to get the printed page from the concept of this book? Well, uh, thanks, Julie. That is a wonderful question. I'm so glad that you're listening to us. Um, so, when you're planning a book, initially you don't think about the printed page at all. You're thinking about the book itself, the conversations, the images. and here i it was it was difficult because there was porish maithi's works the sketches the paintings all of that and there was nimai ghosh's photographs so my first thought was how on earth am i going to bring it all together and then bit by bit we decided uh, on the concept we decided how we wanted to show it and um, the conversations flowed over a period of time nothing happened overnight we must have taken at least 2 years to work on this book then uh, we had mr sood who helped us with the design six years six years mr gosh helped us with the design porish maithi himself gave ideas so much had to be brought in into this book you know the text photographs and the paintings and julie once you see the book i i hope you will understand that it's been a labor of, labor of love thank you uh porish darshan shah is asking you does being prolific does being prolific dilute the intensity of one's art it does not mean that you have to be prolific or you have to be slow how it comes spontaneously my problem except painting i don't understand anything else in life so i paint even 24 hours when i'm sleeping when i am you know i'm dreaming art when i'm walking i'm imagining you know looking at the landscape so so my art is ongoing process is cooking on all the time just i need some time to sit down or you know with easel or canvas to come out my expression love emotion with color and forms so spontaneously it just 
I am just traveling. I am in the flight. I am in the boat. I am in, you know, train. I am sketching. I am capturing the moment. The moment it will never come back. It's like your diary. You know, you used to write every morning earlier days. It's like my diary is always ongoing, twenty-four hours. And that's why you now I paint with every medium in everything. I'm always painting. So that's what it is the prolific. Like I can go now and just do some sketches after this. Maybe I'm eating and just doing sketches, capturing some interesting moment. And so it it is not that I need a very special uh, mood. My mood is there all the time. Not that I have to search the subject. Subject is asking me to paint them. So I never get bored that are what I have I have to paint. He korbo kono mood nahi kono what I have to paint. And I don't have that crisis. They are always inviting me. Are come and paint me na. I am there. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Thank you. So that answers the question, Darsha. That the intensity never flags. Um. Ina, I have a question for you um, from Rajeshri Guha. She asks, commissioning artwork, is this a harmful trend that is being encouraged by those who do not really understand art? And how does it adversely affect the thinking and freedom of the artist? Well, you know, what I feel is that uh, if there are, there are people commissioning art, they must have some idea because a lot of money is being invested when they are uh, commissioning and when they are asking an artist to make an artwork for them. It cannot be that they have no idea. So uh, it, what, what normally happens is with, with a senior artist, they get busy, they, are, you know, they have ongoing projects, exhibitions, they will not be able to make the time. So if a collector does commission, I, I see nothing wrong with that. But uh, for, for an artist to only work with, work with commission projects, I don't think personally that's a great idea. I think to make an exception once in a way is fine, but not to constantly work with commissions. Because that, you know, that just ruins your creativity. If you're constantly going to be, uh, you know, following orders and making artworks to suit, uh, you know, uh, other people's uh, it, it, it's it's better that you just do it once it's an exception but not the rule okay. so Porish seems to have left us now so I think it is time that we conclude the session there are a few other questions and I will just mention them um, you know if you want to make a comment there were more for Porish than for you um, Ray Rai asks I have heard you have sketched BM Ketan's Ski Gardens what kind of art experience was that for you? That was a question for Porish. And there was another question from Krishnendu Ghosh, uh, which said, ah, Porish is back. Porish is back. So Porish, there was a question from uh, Krishnendu Ghosh, which says, when we see an artwork of Porish Maiti, our imagination could be completely different from the artist's imagination, the person viewing the artwork. And hence, there could be a gap. Will you call it a gap or do you, will you leave it to our imagination? It is always better to leave it to you know the viewer's imagination because if if I say everything, then the communication is not going on. So it is very important to leave something for the viewer to create the sensation and imagination. And there then the art grows within, you know, within the, within the people, within the viewers, within everybody. Excellent. And the last question we have today is also for you. And this is a very specific question from Olundhoti Ray, who asks, I have heard you have sketched B.M. Khetan's Key Gardens. What kind of art experience was that for you? That was really an experience. I was in class uh first year you know government art college in calcutta and uh, you know his company was williamson and mega they wanted to invite an artist from england to depict all of his tea gardens in assam 
Dibrugarh, Tejpur, Jorahat, and many places. Uh, Mr. B. M. Khaitan's company there was an artist who is to be the in charge person, uh, Mr. Uh, Mukherjee. I think he was also Mr. Mukherjee, and uh, he said, "You know, why do you have to invite this English artist to pay, you know, too much money? There is this young boy, just first year student, government art college. I have seen his work during this, you know, college exhibition." is extraordinary so this, they asked me how much i was you know i could not even think that i will paint that i will be they will be asking me to paint they said that, why don't you say they said 1000 rupees one painting <laughs> i said my goodness that's really a lot of money they bought my ticket so first time i'll be flying in the plane i could not sleep 3 days <laughs> yeah. my mother asked me are you sure that you will be flying, you'll go in the aeroplane. I said, yes. So I landed. As you know, the tea gardens, the tea estate bungalows are fascinating. And I travel almost all of his tea gardens, Tejpur, Gohati, Jorhat, Pathabgar, and painted the tea, the people, the, the tea making, processing, everything, packing, the bungalows, even I encountered the elephant in there. They said, don't do, they will not do anything. If you don't do anything, they will not do anything. So that was my first experience and good earning with my watercolor. And you will surprise to know they were still, I think they are in their, in his mango lane office, uh, Williamson and Megar. Now I don't know what is the name of that company. After many, many years, about seven, eight years back, uh, I met him. There was this, you know, K. Muma was coming, Kolkata Museum of Modern Art. They asked me to join as the member, a uh, board member of that museum. And the chairman was Mr. B. M. Khaitan. Then when, when the first day when I went to this meeting from Delhi, hmm, Rakhi, the Mr. Rakhi, I'm sorry, Mrs. Rakhi Sarkar said, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Khaitan, I would like to introduce you to me, Paresh. Mr. Khaitan said, I know Paresh. Probably you did not know him that time. <laughs> uh, so he unveiled the story. It was amazing. Wonderful man. And I had the really wonderful i know vision open up living all these you know wonderful bungalows english bungalows staying with those people no exposure in my life that way it was amazing experience still i have few of those paintings with me that is, a lovely, story. That is a lovely story my final question to you on a lighter note is which is your that's my question to you as we finish uh, which is your favorite tea stall in Kolkata and what is your favorite street food? Favorite street food, Ghugni Muri. <laughs> and and your top, favorite top. tea stall, is it, top. is it, uh, is, is and, it, is it, is it, another question you ask? Street food and another question, sorry, you have asked. And is it unused, unused tea stall, which you have painted so beautifully? Yes. Black tea, and you in you know near the Kopai River. Um, I used to I have painted her so many times. When I go, she is married. She has in her own shop. Hmm. Konkali Thala is amazing, and she will and call you. You, have, you have captured it beautifully. <laughs> beautiful. Anyway, I think we are running out of time now, so this is a good moment for me to thank our two. Panelists, Ina, Koresh, thank you so much for giving it's us nice this time. Thank you yes. so very much, Shekhar. That thank was a wonderful conversation. Everybody, thank and you so much. Keep, keep well. Everything will follow. Uh, in thank this you very much. And thank you God bless you all. For inviting us. It was wonderful having this chat. And thank you, Malvika, uh, Tata Steel, and Dr. Mukherjee to you know, really come into today's program. Thank you, Nadi.
and thank you all the viewers thank you, thank you. Okay, so on this high note we shall call it a day thank you very much thank you thank you i love you nice evening <laughs>